The game of hockey is fast and it seems to be getting faster. But the elite players do something special and that is they're able to accelerate or maintain speed between strides. This is an aspect of the game we call the pinch. More simply put, the concept of pinch is really just the two foot glide. Now, the two foot glide is a very important phase of the game for us to assess, especially when we consider the pubic symphysis as the key transduction spot between forces that are produced in the lower extremity that are transmitted up to the arms. The two foot glide is an area of the game where all body contact is going to start and initiate from. All change of direction, whether turning or stopping or starting, is going to happen from a two-foot glide position. And this concept of pinching or arcing on the ice is something that elite players use when they move from inside edge to inside edge to maintain speed on zone entry, to find these soft spots on the ice to give or receive passes, or to simply protect the puck when another player is leaning on them in the offensive or defensive zone. The two foot glide is an underrated phase of the game when we talk about importance. A lot of emphasis is paid on the sprint, but it does seem like if we look at it from an injury potential or injury risk aspect, that the two foot glide phase of the game is an area where force in and around the pubic symphysis is also very high. If you take a stroll through the literature, you'll come across a paper from the late 90s where a single NHL team was assessed using wide lens cameras to identify various skating characteristics that took place throughout the course of the game. These skating postures were broken down into different time characteristics and subcategorized based on how much time was spent in each posture. This is a graphical representation of the first 30 seconds of a shift in the National Hockey League from puck drop. It was clearly identified that the two foot glide and low intensity skating was the most predominant skating characteristic that took place throughout the course of the game. This particular study was also broken down into high point scores and low point scores where oddly enough high point scores did spend less time in high intensity skating postures. <laughs> In a more recent review of international competition where rosters were filled with primarily professional level talent, the author looked to see if there was a change in skating characteristics throughout the course of the game. Not only did they define that low intensity skating was the predominant characteristic performed throughout the course of the game, but they clearly identified that there was a statistical change in high intensity skating from the first to third period. They also took a look at other potential characteristics that took place throughout the course of the game outside of skating to see what other stressors were put on the body throughout the course of a game. Like I said in the beginning, the game is fast and you have to be fast if you want to be good. But clearly, there are many more characteristics to the game than just top end speed and it's worth paying attention whether it's high performance or rehabilitation.